Hi to everyone and welcome in this new Astrophilus video. Today we will see a weekend image the Milky Way from the city center. I am under a Burton Line sky and we will see how we can get a very good image for the condition. So we will use a trick. We will use a near pass filter, so a filter that let not pass the visible light but only the infrared and near infrared. So um, let's get started. So this is the kit by TopTech for the Milky Way in the infrared, so for a light polluted uh, sky. Now we will see everything inside and after we'll go to test it. So this is the kit. Uh, here you can see the ear filter, the ear pass filter, and here the little lens. But let's continue. This is the USB 3 cable. This is for uh, auto guiding, but it's uh, old. Here we have the little adapter to have more space. And here we have the main piece, the camera. So let's put this aside and let's open the camera. Next to mono. You can see it here. Now we open the ear pass filter. And we have to unscrew this little uh, glass window. And we will change this little glass window with this one, so with the filter. We will screw it on. After, we take this little lens, which is a CS lens. We open this two. And after, as a last thing, we... so after you will have this. So the camera, filter, and the lens. So let's go under the night sky. So here we are live, and this is probably the cheapest setup ever for astrophotography without using a cell phone. You can see here the TopTech 662M with the heat pass filter and at $35, uh, very, very cheap uh, tripod from Amazon. Here is unfortunately my Italian <laughs> Bertel 9 Sky and here, you can see that I am using my computer uh, with the 662 with the pass filter and also only by the screen you can see a lot of stars and uh, after I, we will go on the computer to uh, do the post-processing of this very very strange type of astro imaging. Like I said, uh, this is a simple tripod, a little bit of white tape, and the 662M. So here we are on the computer. So I took uh, 30 frames, uh, each one with uh, 20 seconds of exposure, um, without tracking, because we are like at 2.3 millimeters of focal length, so we don't really need tracking for 20 or 30 seconds. And uh, the first thing we have to do with this is the stacking. I already did it in uh, PixInsight, but you can use uh, whatever software you want. And this is the final image. You, we can see a lot of stars right now. Um, and unfortunately, we can see also the house of my neighbor. And this is the light pollution we get from a Bortle 9 sky. But we can simply use Graxpert and do a background uh, remover, background extraction, sorry, and this is what we get. A lot more stars and we have this which is uh, unfortunately a lens glare and so because of the house of my neighbor uh, has a lot of Christmas light. Yes, that's why. Uh, here we can see like the Milky Way, here we can see a little bit more, but we will uh, save and I will go another time on fixing site to do the last bit of preprocessing. So we will open the, uh, the file 
I will do a simple auto stretch. And now uh, I will use the dynamic crop to uh, don't have the house of my neighbor uh, in, uh, in my frame. So we will rotate it a little bit. We will move and I will uh, try to have uh, the most uh, Milky Way in shot. So this part here. Uh, I can also do something to remove the, the lens clay, but for now it's okay because this is only one try. Um, and it's all because I want to show you uh, the result. Now uh, I will do a simple uh, stretch um, here using histogram transformation. So this is the one. I will use the uh, heat and we will we'll stretch a little bit very fast. Maybe I will speed up this. So this is the end result. And I will post you here in the video. I will show you now what an iPhone did. So um, you will see that's quite a difference. Uh, obviously, you can do a lot of things to this image to have like a little bit it uh, more contrast. Uh, you can maybe use like some software to reduce the noise because we have a lot of noise because I didn't uh, use the dark frames um, and so on. But I'd say that for a borderline sky with a $150 uh, setup, this is very, very good.